There are different kinds of imaging techniques that are used in medicine all the time to observe different types of things that occur within the body. It helps doctors identify what's wrong inside without actually having to open you up, which is a big plus in my book. So there are three main imaging techniques that are used in hospitals these days, and that includes x-rays, CTs, and MRIs. Interestingly enough, CTs are a type of x-rays, but they are classified as a different imaging technique. And you would specify ordering a CT scan instead of a general x-ray. And the differences between them are very key in order to determine when you will use them, how you'll look at them, and how you can use them to diagnose something inside of a body. So now I'm going to talk to you about the differences in each of them. So here we're going to start out with x-rays. All the images that I'm getting are from Google Images. I don't want to take any image out of just directly from textbooks because that is copyright. But I'm going to show you some Google Images here and I think they do a pretty good job in identifying the differences. The first one here is x-rays. X-rays just use x-ray beams, x-ray radiation um, in order to penetrate the skin and show you dense stuff. And this includes bones. They don't show you soft tissues, they don't show you cartilage that well, they're primarily used for bones. And that's why you always get an x-ray whenever you break a bone. But if there's something else going on, like a nerve being pinched, or there's a cartilage or bursa being impinged, or there's a blood vessel that's broken, um, another test might be used, which we'll discuss a little later on. But for x-rays, as you can see in this picture right here, which I can blow up right here, they're really good at showing you the boundaries of bones, and you can actually see the outline of the uh, general shape of the tissues around it. However, you can't see any details with them. So that's what x-rays are used for. They're used for observing bone and bone structure. So if you have a fracture right here in this metacarpal, you can easily tell on an x-ray. The next is a CT scan. A CT scan is actually a type of x-ray imaging. But instead of having just one x-ray beam going down, you actually have a circle of them and they, cut, they can allow you to produce a 3D image using x-ray. Now if I blow this picture up, you can immediately tell that there is a vast difference between this picture and the x-ray that I just showed you. And obviously you can see the bones here. Here is a vertebrae. Um, here you can see the uh, nasopharynx cavity over here and you can see the cranium over here and the different uh, passages for air um, in this person's head. So you can see that there are different bone structures and you can tell them apart. However, they're not very clear. CT scans is, use a lot more power uh, x-rays and they actually light up a bit more of the soft tissues underneath. However, you don't get too much detail about them. They do help determine um, any abnormalities within tissues. So you can see the borders of the uh, tongue, for example, or the openings in the nasopharyngeal cavity over here, uh, trachea and esophagus. Um, so that's what CT scans are used for. They're used for identifying uh, tissues, um, but with not that much detail when you wanna go into very fine structures. And this is where MRIs come into play. MRIs, there's actually three types of MRIs. There's a T1, T2, and flare imaging. The important ones that I'll talk to you real quick are T1 versus T2. And here's an image that I blew up over here. T1, the images are actually brought up so that the fat produces a very strong signal and the water produces a much darker signal. And the way that MRIs work are actually using the hydrogens in water molecules and rotating them so they all point in the same direction. And when they all flip back, they release some energy um, and that's what causes the image. So in T1, the water produces a much darker signal while the fat produces a much lighter signal. In T2 weighted images, they actually um, make it so that the water is producing a very bright signal while the fat is producing an intermediate signal. And this is done by playing around with the frequency of the waves and the power. Um, and we've gone to a point where we can do this pretty easily at any um, uh, imaging facility. 
So on these two images, A and B, are both the same location, um, except that the one on the left, A, is a T1, and the one on the right is a T2. And you can see clearly the thing that pops out to me right away is the spinal cord. On the T2, it's very bright, indicating that there's a lot of water content, which is true because it's doused in cerebrospinal fluid. And you could also see uh, it in the brain up here. In the T1, you can't really see that. This color is probably coming from the white matter within the neurons. And you can see some uh, subdermal fat right here as well. Um, and what you can see with the MRI is that you can see a lot more of that fine tissue uh, uh, structure and uh, arrangement as well. And this is good for uh, cartilage as well. So I hope that this helps in determining the differences between x-ray CT and MRI. There is also one more MRI called the flare MRI, um, which is actually where the water content is uh, made to go very black. And this helps in brain scans um, to eliminate cerebrospinal fluid. And you can see the uh, cavities of the ventricles and observe if there's any abnormalities there. Uh, but you'll mostly see T1 and T2 being used um, unless you're looking at some sort of brain anatomy or injury or things like that. So with that being said, that's um, the differences between x-ray CT and MRI. Let me know if I missed anything. If you want any more clarification in the comments down below, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I'll see you next time.